Hello guys, uh, today's session will cover provisioning a cloud-based Linux VM uh, on Azure platform as a cloud platform and that VM I need, need for, you know, Zama the support system. So first of all, I will log in into Azure portal. In Azure portal, I will locate a virtual machines uh, where I need to add it. There are two options, virtual machine or with a preset configuration. Preset configuration are already defined uh, configurations. Here I will choose general purpose, memory optimized and compute optimized other, other choices. So in general purpose, I need to choose my subscription and I need to also give a resource group a name. So I'll give a name Linux VMs. Then I need to give a name for virtual machine itself. So I'll choose the same PKR Linux. And the region is already pre default selected. I will keep it. And uh, Ubuntu Server 20.04 is uh, right now the latest one. Although it is not latest, but I need to choose this one now. Availability zone is must. Although it is mentioned, it is optionally you need to mention, but it is must. So I will choose one here and uh, images as you know ubuntu server 20.04 as a server so the these settings need to be defined these are brief setting and it will this wizard will go on and okay the cost is also mentioned almost 70 dollars per month with two virtual cpus and 8 gb memory uh, this will suffice for our zama system it is more than enough because that requires only cores, but here we are giving virtual CPUs. So the other options are also available and you can filter also at the top, whatever your RAM or virtual CPUs requirements are there. So you can apply the filters as well. So like now only two CPUs configuration, uh, preset configurations are available. And you can also see the cost on the right hand side and maximum IOPS, which is important for data input output uh, operations. And these are temporary storage. Uh, th these are required normally by operating system. Normally it is recommended to have a managed uh, disk as well, but we'll uh, select uh, this one. Then I will check what are the hardware requirements for Zamad. You know, Zamad is an open source platform, though they have paid service on cloud as well. But we require this uh, on our machine. Here it is mentioned that for optimal performance up to 40 agents, I need 6 plus 6 GB RAM. 6 is for Elasticsearch, which works with it, and 4 CPUs core. So these are cores, but I'm selecting here virtual CPUs, which are more than cores. So each virtual CPUs have a specific number of cores. Okay, so I'm checking various options here. And, uh, Let me select which one. Okay, I will choose this one. Got two virtual CPUs, 8 GB memory, and I will uh, customize the username and I will log in through SSH secure shell later on. A port 22 is open. So here the disk uh, premier, premium SSD is the option by default with the encryption type at rest with the platform managed key. And at the below, you can have also manage disk as well if you need normally it is recommended because this one is temporary storage this one is only for temporary storage it is recommending that uh, this vm size uh, normally supports premium uh, disks or uh, premium ssd so i will select this one and uh, okay. I 
I'm thinking of Create and attach a new disk. So this is manage disk option here. Uh, here, one zero two four GB premium SSD is available, but I will not select that one. There are various options of encryption. Create and manage. There are also various disk sizes available here from uh, where you can choose any of your choice. Depends upon your budget as well as uh, your requirements. Whatever software for future sake, you need to define it at once. And this is quite, uh, you know, portable from one, play, one cloud to another cloud or you can download on-prem as well. So these uh, managed disks are portable and uh, there, are, there is SLA with this one and availability is ensured by Microsoft or any other cloud provider. So in this, this time it is portable, but for temporary storage at the top, it is not reliable. Somehow it can be lost as, as told by cloud services, service providers. I'm still thinking and uh, okay, which option would be better? go with premium SSD and uh, I will just create with the default setting although you can choose the next steps as well for a specific settings here the price is shown uh, which is 0 0.0960 US dollars per hour So the overview of the configuration which I have chosen is shown also here. Through SSH, I need to log in from my system, and uh, these are disk options and network networking options. These are by default. So the validation is passed at the top. So anyhow, I can go the previous step as well if you if you like you can go and uh, there is auto shutdown option here i don't need this one because uh, it depends upon me because if if i am working and it is auto shutdown it, it will not be good so i will uncheck this option and you but you can set a schedule uh, shutdown if you are definite okay during office hours you can use it and I have unticked the backup as well for now. If you need later on, you can set it. And uh, you can install extensions as well as tags. Tags is for grouping of various resources on you know cloud. So you can define uh, various tags in order to group your resources. And later on, also for budgeting purpose or cost analysis, you can utilize these tags. So this is the brief here. This is the overview. And it is on the uh, step uh, behind to create a VM. These are network option and management here. Uh, to check and everything is okay and it looks okay proximity placement group network let me check the network SSH port, secure shell port 22 is allowed here, inbound port. 
auseinander, wir werden es hier auseinander. If you go to the disk option. I don't need I don't think any other option I need here okay apart from this so we will go to basic again and I will, I will see my settings here I think everything looks okay so far just um, to this image default networking I will go, go ahead to review and create and let's see. So this is the cost. I need to calculate uh, you know, per month cost. This is per hour cost. So uh, multiply this with, uh, for example, 24 for a day. Okay, multiply by 30 almost. This is monthly charges. These are monthly charges if it is running throughout. I will download the template for automation later on for Kubernetes or you know. Dockers. So this is uh, the script here. JSON. JSON script. I will download it. And keep it somewhere safe. Creating a folder of Azure. Give it a proper name okay so now it is safe now i will go in the check various options so the same parameter which i have chosen in previous wizard it is also now made up in the, in shape of json which can be applied later on if I want to deploy it, so this is another subscription. I don't need this one. I'll close. Okay, so this is our previous one. I will create this one. So also, it is giving me an option of uh, downloading a private key and create resource. This key is very important. Uh, this is used for logging into shell is secure shell. This is a dot pem uh, file and we need to keep it some safe place. And meanwhile, our VM is in deployment stages and uh, the work is in progress and uh, yeah, deployment is in progress. I think in, in a minute or two, it will be deployed. So it will show you the progress while it is deploying you can leave this screen there is no problem at all and in notification it will appear once it is deployed at the top you can see with the bell icon so anyhow it is showing you still deployment in, is in progress Once it is deployed, since port 22 for secure shell is open, I will go to, you know, command shell with admin access, run as administrator, and uh, there I need to issue SSH command, and there are parameters such as that the key file. Okay, so it is showing deployment succeeded. 
the notification is shown deployment is complete i can pin to dashboard as well so all the operations you know uh, vm networking everything disk everything is uh, completed I will go to the resource itself. Here is the brief summary, and there is a public IP uh, for each of the Azure service you will get. And later on, as a subdomain, I will redirect a subdomain with a record, you know, uh, on my domain to this public IP. So so that the Apache web server uh, where I will uh, deploy Zamad support system can be accessible. For now, this was the brief and uh, this is the command for secure shell and we need to give uh, the key and uh, public IP address and you know the private key. Private key is uh, uh, path along with the complete path and uh, once I show the command it is asking me confirmation so it asked me to put a yes complete yes but there is some problem because we need to secure this uh, private key only I should have access only a single user not all users so inheritance of permission need to be removed all the user except my user need to have a full access to this key then only it will uh, connect otherwise it's showing this uh, warning message unprotected private key file so once i again issue the command so there is a green uh, command shell here available that means i have connected myself to ubuntu linux uh, server machine on azure cloud now here i can issue any linux command which are available so here i can sudo apt get update so that os is completely updated any of the patches or new things have come up so it will update so it is now completely updated i will also issue the upgrade command so if there is anything to upgrade it will do this so almost this one is almost finished thank you for watching the video and uh, please uh, write few comments and also like the video and subscribe to my channel to see more of uh, these videos and uh, in my probably next video i will record for how to set up a zama system on a linux uh, vm and uh, you can see that one as well and there will be more uh, coming up so this is this this command is almost completed thank you thank you guys thank you and take care